I'm gonna try and film like four videos tonight and I really don't know how it's gonna go. So, wish me luck. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is the very first of five videos that I will have coming out one each day this week that are dealing with the Canada Reads competition. So for those of you who don't know, Canada Reads is a annual book debate that is exclusively Canadian. Uh, so it's books by Canadian authors and then it's defended by like Canadian celebrities and essentially what happens is they debate different ideas on the books and all of the books are supposed to match one theme. The theme this year is one book to transport us. At the end of each day they'll vote one of the books off until there's one book left. So that's going to be starting next Monday so I'm going to be doing a review of each of the books coming out this week. So the very first book that I'm going to start with is Johnny Appleseed by Joshua Whitehead because that was the first one that I read. Um, it is being defended by actor and filmmaker Devery Jacobs. It is a novel about a two-spirit, queer young man who leaves the reserve and becomes a cyber sex worker in the big city to make ends meet, but he must reckon with his past when he returns home to attend his stepfather's funeral. So this is how I'm going to kind of break the book up. I'm going to go over plot, things that I liked about the plot, things that I didn't like about the plot, the characters, how I felt about them, um, and then I'm just going to cover if there's anything else that I liked or didn't like about the book. I want to touch on the book's writing and then I want to talk about how well it fits that theme of one book to transport us. I'm going to try and keep all these videos under 10 minutes just to make my life easier and so you guys don't get exhausted about hearing me talk constantly every day this week. So without further ado, there won't be as much of this preamble with the other videos. I'm going to dive right into it. So the plot, as it says, it kind of follows, well, it does follow uh, Johnny as he's trying to make enough money in order to be able to go back to the reserve for his stepfather's funeral. So we kind of see him as he goes about his day-to-day -day life, as he reflects on the relationships that he's had in his life, the moments that brought him to where he is now, and then tries to think about what going home is going to be like and kind of reconciling different parts of himself with the people around him that he cares about. The way that this plot is done is very interesting in terms of the time span. I really like the way that it kind of focuses on working within this very narrow window, so it's very much like we're just kind of tossed into Johnny's life, we're getting as much as we can in that period of time. It almost reminds me of like a snapshot of life in some way, which is something that I think the book really benefits from and they're able to kind of use those flashbacks to fill in some of the blanks, but they're not overdoing the story in any way where it feels like you're getting way too much information at once. So, characters. I feel like Johnny wasn't the character that I was most invested in in the book. I think the character I was most invested in was his friend Tito. I didn't write down the names for this and I had to hand this book back into the library, so please bear with me. I will do my best to make sure that I'm getting all these names right. Some of them I wrote down. I'm learning to take notes before these videos. I was just really fascinated with his friend's experience and his friend's kind of understanding of his sexuality because as someone who like studies a lot of this uh, like queer media and sexuality representations and the way that these things are structured in society, it was very interesting for me in the book that um, Tito's very adamant that he's not gay, which is totally understandable because I don't, like, sexual acts don't equal one's sexuality. Sexuality is also fluid and changing and it's also a construct, so complicated. But the thing that I found interesting about him was there was definitely something about his relationship with Johnny that, like, carries this, like, fragment of weight to him and I really wanted more explanation about that. I wanted to learn more about uh, how he was like he was adopted and I wanted to know more about how that impacted him and how that led for him to need jo or want Johnny in his life and what that like emotional connection as well as physical connection with Johnny was because the way that it's written in the book to me it's very clear that for Johnny it isn't just sex, but I wonder if that's what's going through Tito's head as well. And I think that's something that I wished I got a little bit more of throughout the book. What I liked about this book. Uh, what I liked about this book was its 
frank depictions of sexuality. When I was thinking about this book and trying to critique it, I was trying to separate my own comfortability because I'm just like not really a person that would actively go out of my way to read a book that has a lot of sex scenes in it just because that's not necessarily something that I'm uh, comfortable or like interested in reading about but I do think it's really important especially when looking at sex work to be have honest depictions and stories of this especially one of the things in the book that like really resonated with me and just kind of like left me with a a weird feeling but I think that's what it was meant to do was the ways in which people fetishize Johnny because he's indigenous and they want him to be this idea of to like borrow from Thomas King like a dead the dead Indian so you know with the big headdress and the feathers and everything that people think indigenous people are but they aren't really like those are specifically for ceremony and the ways that like people wanted an idea of him more than him as a person. I don't want to say like a com- I guess it's a common experience in different ways for indigenous people because there is this idea of who people think we are and then who we actually are which is something that often comes into conflict and has to be resolved somehow and sometimes for people it's just like learning to give into that and I think that's kind of where Johnny takes it is he's like fine if they're gonna treat me this way and I can benefit off of it then I'm gonna benefit off of it. On top of that was the conversations about sexuality I really appreciated in this book. So for those of you who aren't familiar with the term two-spirit, it means a lot of different things to a lot of different people, but it's kind of a term for different genders or sexualities within indigenous communities. It's kind of this idea of having a both a feminine and a masculine spirit within oneself, and this was something that was like highly valued within indigenous cultures before colonization and then colonization really enforced these like heteronormative ideas into indigenous societies so I think it's really important to have stories that are like reclaiming that part of indigenous identity and culture and also just to have more diverse narratives this is an um an own voices novel so it's written by a two-spirit indigenous person which is wonderful because we need more of those representation and more authentic indigenous voices because it's so frustrating the number of times that there's someone who writes these beautiful amazing stories and then it turns out that they lie about their history and it just like something in me dies every time that that happens because it's so hard to find authentic indigenous stories and to find out that people are like lying in some way about an experience that they don't necessarily have is exhausting to have to constantly have to experience that. What I didn't like about this story, I really struggled with the sexual content just from like my own personal comfort level and I think that's where the idea behind Canada Reads is a book that everyone in Canada should read, could read, like is going to read and I think I find that difficult for everyone in Canada to be able to process that and I'm trying to find the separation between my own comfortability and what like everyone should read and I'm thinking that like maybe that's part of the reason this book should be read by Canadians even though it does it made me a little bit uncomfortable is to force people to sit in their uncomfortability about that and have more open conversations about sex positivity and sex work and like protecting sex workers or people who are especially vulnerable sex, sex workers and looking after those people. I think the biggest thing that I didn't like, and this is gonna flow into the writing area, is the word choice sometimes was just too much for me. Like there's uh, the term white ectoplasm is used at one point. I'm hoping that you can figure out what that is and I just didn't know if that was the right language and I think that's where some of my uncomfortability came from with some of those scenes. There's a particular dream sequence and I didn't know what one of the words meant and when I googled it I found out it was like the bone that a lot of um, mammals have in their penis and that was like specifically being used about like the feeling of having that inserted while someone was having sex or this bear was having sex with him in a dream and I just found it really hard to sit with some of that writing. It just didn't work for me. It, I didn't feel like it was giving the value to the things that were happening. I felt like it was almost pulling us out of it a little bit and I think that's where sometimes I found it hard to keep with the story while I was going through. Alright, last thing. How well does this story transport us? 
I really struggle with this book for this one, and when I get to one of the other books that is a memoir, I'll probably say a lot of the similar things, but maybe it's because I'm an indigenous person, but like a lot of the issues in this book really resonate and hit home with me, and I think because of that, it I don't know if I would say it transported me, because I think it kept me very rooted in my experience of reality. Obviously, I'm like a white passing indigenous person and I experience a ton of privilege because of that, but I'm very actively aware of that part of my identity. And as much as I love reading stories about it, sometimes it's really difficult to read stories about indigenous people where they're suffering or struggling. And I think while Joshua Whitehead does try to explore this authentic experience of what it means to be both like indigenous and queer, there is of course that reminder of the pervasive racism that exists within our society and because of that it's very rooted in reality. It wasn't my favorite book I have to say and I think that's part of why it didn't transport me was because I struggled to get into it even though I read it in one sitting I wouldn't say I was like completely enveloped in the world and had to know everything that was happening about it. I think I kind of gave it three stars because I was kind of here nor there about it. I might even push it like further down to two stars I just want to hate doing that to indigenous authors because I I want to encourage their work but obviously just judge the work as work and I was really hoping to enjoy this book so I don't know that's where I stand with it let me know what your thoughts are on the book if you have read this I'm very curious to see what happens with it in Canada Reads tomorrow I will be talking about the Midnight Bargain and then Wednesday will be Hench Thursday will be, do, I think it's Two Trees Make a Forest, and then Friday will be, I think it's like honey butter bread. See, this is going to get worse as I film more of these videos. But yes, uh, feel free to tell me your thoughts. Make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you see when the other videos come up, and I will see you all tomorrow.